yes good evening class so today we are going to look at t accounts we are going to look at t accounts and general ledgers t accounts are used a tool used to record financial transactions so basically these two accounts they are informal terms for a set of financial records that use double entry bookkeeping so uh, it is called T accounts because the bookkeeping entries are laid out in a way that resemble a T shape. That's the reason why it is called a T accounts. Uh, each T account has two sides. It has a debit side and a credit side. So uh, the general ledger is a book of accounts that contains all of the T accounts for a business so this basically this general ledgers it contain all the t accounts for the business uh, the ledger is also a book of original entry which is identified as a special book in which transactions are recorded in other words it's a book in which accounts are kept an accounting, general, an accounting general ledger could also be a report that provides a detailed description of every general ledger's account and the transaction that make up the balance in that account. Um, so when we look at some scholars, the term ledgers as a, complete, as a complete set of accounts for a business entry or reference book of the accounting system that is used to classify summarize transactions and prepare data for financial statement in other words the general ledger holds all the financial information used to create the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of financial position reports so um statement of comprehensive income it is the same as income statement or profit and loss account and um, statement of financial position reports it is the same as a balance sheet and serves several minor main, main purposes in financial operations of the business so that's basically the ledger so let's look at the types of ledger we have sales ledger we have general ledger and we have purchase ledger. Uh, sales ledger. This is a book or a set of books in which the personal accounts of credit customers are kept. So are those credit customers, they are also known as debtors. So these debtors, debtors are the people that the business is demanding those are other data so in other words the balance of customer accounts shows the amount that the customer owes the business so it shows the amount that the customer owes the business therefore the total of balances in the sales ledger is the total amount the business is owned by its credit customers of which amount is called trade receivable or accounts receivable so our uh, trade receivable or accounts receivable it is it can also be uh, the same as the data because that is the amount that Uh, accounts receivable can be outstanding invoice that a company has or the money that a client owes the company. So uh, it is it can it can it is referred to as a trade receivable because the business has the right to receive to to, to, to receive that amount because it has delivered products. 
mark the trade receivable is also known uh, is also shown as a current asset in the statement of financial position statement of financial position can it is also known as a uh, balance sheet so uh, this uh, trade receivable it is a current it is an example of current asset It is an example of current assets. So let's look at purchases ledger. A purchase ledger is defined as a book or a set of books in which the personal accounts of credit suppliers are kept. So here we basically we keep our credit suppliers. The Account, a credit supplier is also called creditor. So a creditor, it is a person that demands the business. That is a creditor. The balance of a supplier's account shows the amount that the business owes the supplier. Therefore, the total of balances in the purchases ledger is the total amount that that the business owed by each credit supplier. This amount is called trade payable or accounts payable. Trade payable is shown as current liability in the statement of financial position. So um, in the statement of financial position, trade payable, it is, uh, an ex it is shown uh, under current liabilities because it is an example of current liabilities this is an obligation of the business because at the end of it the business has to pay that money back to its suppliers that's why it is called a trade payable or account payable so a general ledger as earlier stated that a ledger is a book or a set of books in which all other accounts are kept so all other accounts are kept under ledger uh, for example general ledger accounts uh, including we have assets so uh, assets accounts so under assets accounts we have uh, cash accounts we have cash we have accounts receivable, we have inventory, which is the same as stock, we have investments, we have land, we have equipment. And also we have examples of general ledger liability account. Uh, we have not payable, we have accounts payable, we have accrued expenses we payable, and we have customer deposits. These are all examples of general ledger liability account. So let's look at an example of a, an example of statement of comprehensive income found in a general ledger. So we have sales, we have service fee revenue, we have salaries expense, we have rent expense, we have advertising, uh, we have advertising expense, we have interest expense, and we have loss on deposit of assets so you have to be very keen about these examples you have to put in your head uh, the examples the examples of uh, the, the examples of uh, po the examples of ledgers that are po at a phone under statement of financial position and also the examples of ledgers that are found under a uh, statement of comprehensive income because it will help you in preparing comprehensive income so that you will not be able to leave out some information so let's look at the format of a drawing general ledgers uh, we will put the name of the account so we have basically two sides we have the debit side and we have the credit side so last time we look at the the law the journals the role of uh, debit and the role of uh, credit so you know when an when an asset is increasing it is put where and when uh, liability 
it's increasing it is put under this so the other information has to help you here a lot because here you identify the account after identifying the account you should know where it falls is it an is it an asset is it a liability is it expense is it income or revenue so you should know when a revenue is increasing um, it should be located under this side so we have a debt we have particulars we have folio we have amount we have debt uh under this is under debit under debit side so under credit side we have the debt we have the particular we have the folio and we have the amount so it is not a necessity to put the folio at some to, some time you can leave out the folio So that's the format. That is that is the format in that is the format of general ledger. So the meaning of folio uh, it is either single sheet of paper or the page number printed on that single sheet of paper to identify its proper location in a large Term. So you have to name like for example you have first of your account the account num number one you have uh, let's say you have cash so you will put that cash to be zero one so that is your cash so uh, you have bank you name bank to be zero two uh, you have uh, expense account you name your expense account to be zero three so whenever you're putting uh is whenever you're recording a, a statement whenever you're recording your data under general under gen, general ledger so under folio you will put zero one uh, for cash and then zero two for bank like that um, so let's look at the example the following transactions belong to ben limited for the month of june 2023 opening balance was a six thousand dollar cash and twenty thousand dollar at bank so uh which accounts do we have here so basically we have an opening balance we have a we have cash we have bank and we are going to open up trading account because this is an opening it is it was for the other previous month so they have it is now it becomes your it was the closing it was the closing balance of their previous month so it becomes the opening balance of the current month so that's why we are going to open a trading account uh, we have trading account, we have a bank account, and we have cash account. So we have to identify which one is increasing, which one is reducing. So when the month of June started on first, our balance was six thousand was six six thousand cash. So it means, in other words, we have six thousand cash at cash. So at bank we have twenty thousand so it means it is increasing our cash is it is increasing and our bank is increasing so uh, we open up cash account cash account we have debit side we have credit side so uh, we should put uh, we have the date here I've not included the date and um, I've not included the folio, but I've just included the, 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 the details and the amount. So under details, we have trading account because trading account is giving to, uh, to, to, to cash because it was our, our cash was 6,000. So it means cash was increasing. So when cash is increasing, we report we record it under debit side because it is an asset when an asset increase we record it under debit side 
So, and, and as cash is increasing from what? It is increasing from a trading, uh, trading account. So we have to put the trading account under details and we put the amount which is 6,000. So we open up a trading account. A trading account is losing to what? It is losing to cash. So we put it under credit side. This is our credit side. That's why we have put cash and the amount is 6,000. So we, in, we have another one. We have a bank. So we have bank. So we, we, we already have our trading account. So we no need to open a trading account. So it means each and every statement that has a trading account, we shall come and record it under trading account. So we have bank. Uh, uh, trading was losing to bank. So it means uh, we under it, we have bank and we put uh, 20,000. So let's open up a bank account. So a bank account, we have debit side, we have credit side. So it is, uh, it is increasing, it is, bank is increasing from uh, trading. So we put trading and then the amount was 20,000. Uh, that is our first example, our first statement. So let's go to on second. Second, we have a, uh, Two, she has, a, she purchased a machine for $5,000 cash. So uh, we have to identify which accounts do we have. So we have, here we shall not use purchase account because they have mentioned the name of the account. So the name of the goods that was bought. So it means they purchased a machinery. So we are going to have machine account and cash account. So which one is losing and which one is gaining? Because you bought a machine, it means your machine is increasing and then you use cash for buying that machine. So it means the cash is reducing. So when the cash is reducing, we put under, we record that transaction under credit side because it is an asset when an asset lose we report under credit side and the machine is an example of an asset fixed asset so when a fixed asset is gaining we put under debit side so let's come and open up an account we already have the account for cash so you just come here and put uh, cash under credit side so it is losing to what? It is losing to machine. And then the amount is 5,000. So, uh, so machine, we open up machine account, machine account, uh, credit debit and credit. So we are going to debit machine because it is gaining. It is an example of asset. So it is, it is gaining. So it is gaining from cash, the amount, 5, so that is our statement two. So statement three, we have purchased good for 1,000 cash and 10,000 by share. So here we have a purchase account, a cash account, and we have check account, which is bank account. So uh, we have to identify which one is losing, which one is gaining. So you purchase good using cash. So it means you use the cash to buy the goods. So purchase account is gaining and then the cash account is losing. And then we, uh, we also purchased goods using a uh, bank. So it means bank is losing by 10,000 and then stock is gaining. So to get the exam, to get the total amount for purchase, you add 1000 plus this 10,000 uh, but we are going to record it separately yeah so we open up we already have our cash account so no need to open another cash account so you come to your cash account and you put and you say 
cash our cash was losing and when cash is losing we have to credit it so we come and put is losing to what is losing to purchases which is 1000 we are done recording cash account uh, so we come and we record for we come and we record for under purchase account. Under purchase account, purchase is gaining. So it is gaining from where? From bank. How much? 10,000. And then it is also gaining again from cash, which is 1,000. So we come and we are done recording purchase account. So we come and record under bank account. So uh, bank account, bank account is losing. Bank account, it is losing to purchases, which is 10,000. We record under credit side. So uh, that one, we are done. So that we are done recording our statement theory. So we go for our fourth statement. <laughs> Excuse me. So goods for cash, 2,000 and 1,500 on credit. So here we have to identify the types of accounts we have. So we have sales account, we sold goods for cash. Um, when, there's, when, when they mention sold goods without, any, without putting the name of the good sold, you use sales. And when they put purchase good without putting the, uh, the name of the item that was purchased, we use purchases. So here we have sold goods for cash, 2,000 and 1,000 and 1,500 on credit. So here we have sales account. We have sales account. We have, uh, we have sales accounts. We have cash accounts. We have data accounts. So I remember that we have said data, these are the people that demand a business. So it means These are the people that the business demand. So it means the business sold the goods to debtors, um, to its suppliers or its customers. So they're saying sold goods and it was paid 2000 on cash and the $1,500 was taken on credit. So there we, they become our debtors. So here we have a uh, sold good so when you sell good it means you're getting the money is coming in so the, that money is coming in which is we got um 2000 and we have data which which is one five so those data at the end of at the end of it the customer has to pay that money back so here we data it is an example of an asset so that's why under cash account, we are going to debit cash account and we debit debtors account, then we credit sales account. So let's come. We already have our cash account, so no need of creating another one. So what we do, we just come and identify cash account is, it was, it was gain so it is put it is our cash was increased by 2000 from sales and then uh, we come and we open up we come and open up a debtors account our debtors Our debtors was in our debtors was increased by one thousand five hundred from sales. From sales, so we are going to open up sales account. Our sales account. Our sales account. Our sales accounts, we put it under credit sales, under credit side, which is cash. We sold goods using cash, uh, which is 2000 and then we also sold on credit, which is 1500 
So let's go and look at a statement number five. Sold goods for three thousand dollar by check. So uh, here we have sales account and we have bank account. So again, here we have a bank, which is uh, the bank is receiving because you sold goods and then you receive a check, which means the bank is increasing and those goods are, our goods are reducing. So here you have to open up a bank account, which we already have the bank account. So the bank, we are going to debit bank. So it means uh, we are receiving uh, 3,000 from our sales. And then we come to our sales account. Then we are losing our goods to bank using cash, check, sorry, which is 3,000. So let's look at exam. Uh, let's look at statement six. Paid salaries for the workers using cash worthy eight hundred. So uh, here we have salaries. Salaries are an examples of expenses. So we have salaries account, salaries account, and cash account because we use cash to pay for the salary. So here we have two accounts salary accounts and then cash accounts so we come and we open up a cash account which we already have so no need to open up a cash account you just come and put our cash under credit side because we are losing cash to salary which is 800 and then you come and open up a salary account salary account and then we debit salary because the salary account is receiving 800 usd 800 dollar so let's come to statement seven withdrew cash from the bank worthy 700 for personal use withdrew cash from the bank worth is 700 for personal use so they withdrew the cash it, it means he removed the cash withdrawing it doesn't mean only withdrawing from the bank but you can get cash withdrew cash from the bank so it means here we have a free account we have cash you withdrew the cash from the bank worthy this for personal use so we have cash account we have bank account and then we have drawings account because draw, uh, any money that is withdrawn for personal use it is drawing so here we have free accounts we have cash accounts we have a personal uh, sorry we have cash account we have bank accounts we have drawings accounts So here our cash is receiving, our bank is losing because we withdrew cash, 700 for personal use which is drawing and our drawing is receiving. So we come at our cash, cash account. We come at our bank account. Bank account, we have drawings 700, and then we come and record our drawings. Our at on we open up drawing account. So we open up a drawing account and put drawings under because the drawing is receiving, which is 700. So let's go and do example eight. Sold goods for 10,000 by check. Sold goods for 10,000 by check. 
So here we have sales account and we have check account. We have cash account and we have sales account and bank account. So bank bank is receiving and our sales is losing. So we credit sales and we debit bank. So you come to our bank to our bank account then we debit we debit bank is receiving from our sales 10,000 and then we we credit sales account we credit our sales account we credit our sales account We credit our sales account which is 10,000. So let's look at uh, statement number 9. Acquired loan from bank worthy this one. So you got a loan from the bank. You got a loan from the bank. So when you when 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 you go to a bank and get a loan, it means the business is the one receiving that money. So it means uh, we put that money under debit side under bank account. So we debit the loan account and we credit we debit the bank account and we credit the loan account. We credit the loan account. So let's look at example 10. Mail sells worthy 1,000 cash and 2,000 on credit. So here we have sales account, we have cash account, and we have debtors accounts. So our sales is going to, our sales is going to lose we are going to credit sales account by 1000 from cash and then we also uh, credit our sales account by 2000 from the data and under cash account we are going to debit our cash by 1000 and under our data's account, we are going to debit our data's by 2000. So let's look at exam at statement 11. Purchased more stock for 20,000 using check. Here he bought more stock using check, which is the bank. 20,000. So here our purchases are going to increase and then our bank is going to reduce. So it means we are going to debit purchases and we are going to credit bank. So here we have paid annual license for 4000. So here we are going we have to we have annual license account we open up annual license account and we open up cash account so our cash account is going to lose two license so it means on our license account we are going to debit our license account because license is an example of expenses and when an expense increase we put we record under debit side so we are going to record our cash we are going to record our cash and our cash account under credit side so uh, we go to last we have a boat furniture for 100 for 100 dollar using shed so here we have furniture account and we have 
check account so uh here furniture is gaining which is 100 dollar and then bank is losing which is 100 so it means we are going to debit furniture account and then we are going to credit bank so that was our one example that we have looked at under ledger account so let's go and look at uh, so after before that we have to balance our accounts we have to balance our accounts so after recording all those accounts from our data that we were given then we come and balance off their accounts so we balance off the accounts by adding each side we add we total up that side of debit side and we have to total up that side of credit side so when you add let's start with trading when you when we add and when we add so this trading account it has only one side that I was recording to was recorded to only credit side so this one you just total up as 6000 plus 20 which is 26 so you just total up so um because we want this side we want uh, data to be debit side to be equals to credit side so what you're going to do you're going to get this amount that is under credit side and this one didn't have any amount so you're going to call it as balance carried as bal as balance carried forward so it is balance carried forward it is 26000 so it means we are able to balance up our amount which is 26 thousand and we have uh, which is 26 thousand so you find out that data this de debit side is equals to credit side so we have balance of trading account so when we look let's let's balance up a cash account so when you total up cash account under debit side we have six thousand plus uh, 2,000 which is 8 plus um, 1,000 which is uh, 9,000 USD so let's look at credit side how how much do we have under credit side so under credit side we have 5,000 plus 1,000 which is 6,000 6, 6, plus 800 plus 800 then plus 400 so you find out that this amount is less you find out that the data data side it is greater than credit side so you you have to you bring you, you you get that difference you total up this one and you total up this one so you get that difference that difference is the one that you call balance carried forward and you put which is 1008 which is 1800 so when we total up we will be able to come with the same amount which is 9000 and 9000 that is how you balance up so our cash is 1800 So let's balance up purchase account. So under purchase account, we have credit side, we have de debit side. So uh, we only have our records under, our data was recorded only under debit side. So you just, you add up, um, you add 10,000 plus 1,000 plus 20,000, which is 31,000. Then you bring that to the credit side, which is balance, current, which is balance current forward. So we have 31,000. So we come and balance up for the bank. 
So um, for the bank, we have under debit side and we have under credit side. So um, we have 20, we have 3,000, we have 10, we have 50,000. So we also have to add up this. We have 10, we have 7, we have 20, and we have 100. So we total up to, when you add 10 plus 20, that is 30, then uh, 7 plus 100, which is 800. So it gives us a total of 38,000. 38, so you get 38,000 minus 8, 38,000. So you get uh, this 80 theory minus 38. 80 theory minus 80. So let's add up 10,000 plus 700. Plus 20 plus 100 minus 83,000. Yes, so which give us 52,200. So this 52,200 it becomes our difference. So when you add up, you will be able to get the balance sides. So the sides will be able to balance. So let's balance out data. We under data we have debit side and we have credit side. So we have only under the de debit side. So you add up debit side which is 3500 and you just bring this side to, in order to balance up. So we have loan. Loan we have 50 we have 50 under credit side, so you just bring to debit side to balance up. So we have under Sarali. Sarali we have only under one side, which is debit side. So uh, you just bring balance strokes D, which is 800. So here we have already balanced up. So we look at license. License, you, it has only under one side, which is debit, de debit side. We, we, we have 400, so under credit side, we just bring that 400 to become our balance, carried forward, then brought down, balance brought down, which is 400. So we balance up sales. We have credit and debit. So our sales has only in on one side, which is credit side. So you have to balance the credit side and you see how much is given. You have to total up. So our total is 19,500. So that 19,500, you just take it to the debit side to become our balance brought down. So let's look at furniture account. Under furniture account, we have only under debit side so you have to bring the bit side you have to just bring the this 100 to credit side in order to balance to become our balance carried down so let's look at trial balance the trial balance is a list of all of the accounts in general leisure and their balances so um, this trial balance, it is just the list of all the accounts in general ledger. So given the information, you just bring the, the list of all the accounts of the general ledgers with, and their balances. That's the reason why you have to balance a general ledger. It gives you and it, it helps you to create up a trial balance. It is prepared to ensure that the accounting equation is balanced. 
At the end of a given period, all accounts are balanced off and the balances brought forward are then extracted and used to prepare what is known as trial balance. So at the end of period, we have looked how we, ha we, balanced, we balance under general leisure. So at the end of it, we will be able to bring this balance carried forward. This balance carried forward, we will be able to bring it to the trial balance. So it's the one that we take it to the trial balance under our accounts. A trial balance can be defined as a list of accounts, titles, and their balances in the ledger on a specific date shown in debit and credit column. So basically, under trial balance, we have two columns. We have debit column and we have credit column. If the double entry in the respective was done correctly, then the trial balance should balance. So if, if your trial balance is not balancing, it means you had made errors somewhere in your financial, in your ledgers, or in your double entry, you have, you have made some errors. Uh, for example, the debit and the credit balance should do equal. So under trial balance, your debit should be equal to your credit. A trial balance should have extract date in which it was extracted. This is because a trial balance is a snapshot of a particular day and any other day could have a trial balance with totally different figures. So you have to bring the date in a trial balance. So let's look at the errors that may, errors not affecting the trial balance. We have human, uh, you know we are human. A human being can be very perfect in every, can, can, can't be very perfect in every and sometimes they may make unintended errors. So you, you know that uh, human beings are not perfect. So at some time, they may make errors that are not intended. Uh, the trial balance might not detect and follow, and the following are the errors that might not affect the trial balance, including the following. So we have errors of omission. What are errors of omission? This is an error that occurs when transaction is completely omitted from the books of accounts. So this error occurs when the transaction, this error the error of omission it occurs when the entry has not been recorded although transaction has occurred during that uh, period. So it means when you've not uh, record when you've not uh, record that that transaction. So when you've not record that transaction although the other The transaction has occurred during that period. So that is errors of omission. So let's look at errors of principle. Errors. Errors of principle. This occur when we enter transaction in wrong class of account but still observed double entry. So basically, uh, this errors of principle it is, it is when it is a mistake made when in, when. Uh, in which that entry violates the, the fundamental principles of accounting. So for example, uh, that when that when you enter 
when you enter a transaction in wrong account um maybe that transaction it was not supposed to be entered under assets or under cash account and you entered under cash account so that is error of principle so let's look at errors of we have errors of on commission these types of errors occurs when the correct amount is entered but in the wrong personal in a wrong person personal account though the account is in the same class of per account so basically this error can occur when a bookkeeper record debit or a credit to the correct ac account but to wrong subsidiary account or ledger it is an, on the same side uh, on the same it might be the the right it is recorded at the right the side let me say uh, for you may record under debit side or credit side it is it falls under credit side which is right but it was recorded under a wrong account so that is error of commission so we have a compensating error we have compensating error these are errors that cancel out each other for example an error that overstates both the credits and debits or an error that understates both the debit and the credit by the same account uh, for example we may have the wrong amount which is recorded in inventory and is balanced out by the same wrong amount being recorded in accounts payable to pay for that inventory so that's an example of compensating error so we have the error we have the error of original entry error of original entry these are errors that occur when the original figure is incorrect and yet double entry is still observed using the incorrect figure so when you put incorrect entry so you you, you have the errors of original entry you put the figures that are not correct so we have a complete reserve reserver of entries this is an error that occurs when the correct amount is posted in the correct account but in a wrong side of account so this one usually it occurs when you post in that it is the correct amount yes and you have posted in the right account but you post in the wrong side for example it may be falling under debit side but for you you're posting it under credit side so it means your amount is correct here and then the account that's supposed to fall in it is correct here but the, the issue is here we have posted under and under wrong side that is a complete reserve of entries so we have a trans transposition errors this is a special type of an error of the original entry it occurs when wrong sequence of individual characters in a in a figure is entered wrong sequence of individual characters in a figure is entered such as transposition error So uh, let's look at an example. So here we are going to look at the example that we looked at, which was a ledger's account. So after balancing our ledger's account, 
this the same example for our ledger accounts is the one that we are going to use for um extracting trial balance so basically when you're given a trial balance without being uh, asked for to pre to to prepare a general ledgers you have to first prepare a general ledger because these general ledgers they give you an overview of uh, what you're going to record under our trial balance so you have to first work it out under general ledgers so we have already worked out our general ledgers using this example. So let's look at the same. We are going to use this, the same examples. So um, we have our company, Ben, ben Limited. Uh, what are you extracting? Which is trial balance the month for the month of June 2023. She's supposed to be 2023. So here we have our uh, details, we have a volume, so um, we have debit side, we have credit side. So we have our trading account. Our trading account, we balanced it. What was the balance? We come and check out our balance. It was 26. So our trading account, let's name it, it was, the folio, it was, uh, one, let's name it 100. You can use 001, you can use one, you can use 01, you can use 001, you use any number that you're comfortable with. Uh, so our folio, we name it to be our 100. So our folio we have 100, which is trading account. So trading account it's recorded under debit side. So we come and record it under debit side, which is 26. So we have our cash account. Let's name it 100 one so we come to our cash account what was our balance carried forward our balance carried forward the difference it is um, 18,000 18,000 so we take this 18,000 to record under trial balance under trial balance we record the balances which are carried forward that's why we are carrying our difference to be this car balance carried forward to be our to record it under trial balance so we have 1800 which we record it under trial balance which is recorded under debit side it is recorded under debit side because all assets are recorded under debit sites and all capital incomes uh, liabilities are recorded under credit side so we record it 1800 so we have machinery which we are going to name it um, zero, 100, zero, two. Sorry, 102. So we have 5,000. It was the balance. When you come to our machinery, to our machinery, it was 5,000. So it's the one that we record under here. So we go to our purchase account. We come and look at our purchase account, our balance carried forward was 31 so we take this 31 and we put it under purchase account which we debit then because uh, we debit purchases so we have a um, bank account bank account which is um, 104 
So we come and see what was our balance carried forward and the bank account. Our balance carried forward was 52,200. So it's the amount that we are going to record under trial balance. Under trial balance. So a bank is an example of assets. That's why we put it under the debit side. So we go to sales. Uh, sales are always recorded under credit side. So we look at, uh, we have 19,500. So we come and we see whether that was our balance. So our sales was 19, yeah, here, car balance current forward, it was 19,500. So we look at our data. Our data, the balance was balance current forward was three thousand five hundred. It is recorded under debit side. So salary, salary is an example of expense. An, an expense is recorded under debit side. So we record under debit side. So we go to loan. When we look at loan, uh, we, sorry, drawings. Drawings are recorded under debit side which we put 700 and then we have loan loan which is recorded under credit side it is an example of um, liability loan. so we look at uh, license account it is an example of expense we have we put under debit side which is 400 and then we furnish it is an example of uh, assets, fixed assets, so we put it under debit side. So we total up. Your, 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 your debit side should be equal to credit side after putting all. So if your debit side is not equal to credit side, it means you made an error somewhere and you have to go and rectify it and look what should be the error that you made and you correct it. So, uh, thank you. Uh, that's the mark of today's lecture. So, we shall meet on the next uh, lecture. Thank you.